Hello everybody, and how about we watch another death battle together, Kirby versus Majin Buu. And now, I've seen what Kirby can do, like in the Smash Brothers series. And, uh, like, he, he's nowhere near tough enough, in my opinion, to fight against Majin Buu. I've seen all of Dragon Ball Z and GT and see what Majin Buu is capable of. Like, Kirby doesn't look like he can even, like, do very much damage to a planet, from what I've seen. But, like, Majin Buu can destroy a planet, like, very easily. Like, fit just by one little blast, he can level a whole town, just like the androids. Okay, let's go ahead and watch this. Come on. Imagine right now, what does the apocalyptic destroyer of worlds look like? Stop thinking, because you're wrong. It's these pudgy pink terrors. Kirby, Nintendo's floating puffball of never-ending cheer and dreams. And Majin Buu, the most vicious monster in the Dragon Ball universe. Yep. His and I, Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Over a thousand years ago, an epic war waged throughout the universe. The legendary Star Warriors battled against the vile nightmare for the freedom of everything that ever was. Ultimately, good prevailed, but at the cost of many, many lives. Yet one infant star warrior escaped the carnage, destined to awaken a millennium later and save the galaxy. His name is Kirk. Wait, what? The cute and cuddly pink puffball who lives in Happy Land? Are you sure you're reading the right backstory? Yes, he crash landed on Popstar, the most confusingly shaped planet ever, and has been defending the kingdom of Dreamland ever since. But look at him! He's just so adorable and cuddly! He couldn't hurt a fly! Kirby is a ravenous cannibal who thrives on the blood of mass murder. Did you do this? Holy shit! He may not look it, but Kirby is a powerhouse. He possesses incredible strength, speed, yeah, he durability, really does not look and an arsenal it. stranger than an average day in Florida. His really is not. power is his inhale ability, which sucks almost everything in with a powerful vortex. With it, he can clear out everything from a quick meal to an acre of forest in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Plus, Kirby's body is malleable, allowing him to stretch his mouth and inhale larger objects. Though he does have trouble wrapping his mouth around extremely large and heavy things. Black Black Kirby weighs practically nothing, allowing him Boom, to stick. clean his body and fly like a sentient balloon. <laughs> he can also traverse the skies and outer space using his personal vehicle, the Warp Star. Which he can call up at any time on speed dial. No, really, he uses a cell phone. Somebody get me that number. I tried 1-800-PINK-RIDE, but it was something else. The Warp Star is Kirby's primary... What do you think it was? <laughs> what do you think that number was? It is forged of Kirby's own Must be energy, something weird or awkward because of the way he said it. Destroyed, Kirby can easily create a new one on his own, making the cell phone kind of pointless. I'd be happy to take that phone off of his hands. Oh, I'm a bit iffy on standing anywhere near that star-driving balloon marshmallow. Look at him! He doesn't even care! He's a monster! It's about to get even worse. Guess what just happened to that poor creature? See, when Kirby swallows a victim, they don't exactly die. Turns out Kirby's stomach is, in fact, an entirely separate and endless dimension of reality. So he never really? feels full. Talk about getting your money's worth at an all-you-can-eat buffet, though. Kirby can trap thousands of victims in this abyss. Then, he can actually enter his own stomach dimension and draw from his captive's power using his copy ability. How in the hell does he, like, swallow himself? He likely projects an astral image of himself within the dimension which can act on the physical plane. Sure. Anyway, with the copy ability, Kirby's form and power change based on what he's eating. By devouring an enemy with a mallet, he can become Hammer Kirby, a master of whack-a-mole. Fire Kirby <laughs> can unleash a torrent of flame and survive all manner of heat. Ice Kirby freezes foes solid. Wheel Kirby is fast enough to drive around the entire kingdom of Dreamland in under two seconds. Though, who knows how he can see where he's going. There's Mike Kirby, who's singing talent There's no way he can be so faster awful. than Sonic. Everything that hears it dies. Wait, there's no way he can be faster than Goku. Or the characters in the, in the drama like of the universe. Like karaoke night with the ladies. Yeah, uh, hey. Stone Kirby is nearly indestructible and sword 
Kirby is a master with a blade. He can even fire sword beams, which can cut through anything without mercy. And yet, Link can't Put really do that kind of stuff with his sword, with the, the master. And make it grow into the powerful Ultra Sword. <laughs> Fighter Kirby is a master martial artist, and by inhaling a miracle fruit, he becomes Hypernova Kirby, capable of devouring worlds. Last but not least, by absorbing his own warp star, Kirby can create his ultimate weapon, the Star Rod, a magical staff powered by dreams and capable of destroying evil. And most of the moon. The only problem with Kirby's copy ability is they don't last. One bad hit, and there it goes. But even without an added ability, Kirby is remarkably tough. He's powerful enough to crack a planet in half, fast enough to run on water, and strong enough to throw a monster 30 times his size on a frying pan all the way to the sun, circle the burning star, and return to Kirby's feet with the perfectly cooked monster. I honestly don't believe Burt be Curry is really capable of all that. But he's not just strong. He's so tough that he was barely phased after being crushed under thousands of tons of pressure and effortlessly survived an explosion massive enough to eclipse the entire world. He's achieved all of this despite Kirby the cannot be this strong. Tall. See, it's not the size of the monster. It's how he throws a fucking humongous frying pan into the sun and back. Well, Kirby does have one crucial flaw. He's a baby and has yet to fully mature as a Star Wars. Yeah, he's not too bright, so he's not going to be one of any genius strategies mid-fight. Fortunately, he's powerful enough to get away with it. Kirby is the most adorably terrifying thing in the world. I disagree, Boomstick. Okay, there's an ad going on. Hold on just a minute. Okay. Oops, sorry about that. Don't worry, it's going to be over in a few seconds. Damn ads. Okay, it's continuing. Sorry about that. True terror is something unpredictable, unstoppable, and dreadfully deceiving. A perfect description for the pink monstrosity known as Majin Buu. Majin Buu is a fat pink man-sized baby thing with enough power to destroy a planet, and I assume he's made of some sort of bubblegum, probably Big League Chew. Buu has existed since the dawn of time, but was only discovered five million years ago by the nefarious wizard Vividi. Vividi released Majin Buu on a helpless universe, intent on destroying everything. After annihilating hundreds of planets, Vividi set his sights on Earth, sending Buu ahead in a sealed capsule just waiting to be but then Bibbity got himself killed before he could get to Earth and release the Pink Terror. But no worries, the weird lizard wizard thing had a backup plan in the form of a magic clone named Bobbity. Yes, clone, not son, that was a mistranslation. So Bibbity, Bobbity, and Boo put them together and what do you get? A Disney lawsuit. Anyway, the double <laughs> so true. set out on a quest to recover Boo. And, and I never thought of that plan. until this came Eventually, up in Bobbity found this Boo video. Shell. But turns out there was a slight defect, and Boo was, um, a complete idiot. <laughs> I say it was ridiculous that Gohan was not able to damage Majin Boo. Oh. It was ridiculous from how powerful the Kamehameha was. His Kamehameha. <laughs> About your terrible twos. Boo has a ridiculous arsenal for killing worlds. He can fly, shoot lasers, destroy cities by breathing too hard, and can fire a beam from his head penis that turns people into candy. Head penis? <laughs> it's not his genitals, it's his... Well, actually, I don't know what it is. Which brings me to his strangest ability, his whole body in general. Whatever he's made of, it's magic in nature. Boo's body can be pulled, stretched, or even ripped apart with no negative effects. He can even pull entire slabs from his belly and use his own flesh as a weapon. Ah, this is just getting stranger and stranger. Yes, and he apparently does feel pain, though it seems to please him. Like some sort of combat masochist. Fortunately, his body can regenerate almost instantly. He can be blessed into smellerines and reform himself in seconds. He's 
practically invincible. Who can mimic any key attack after seeing it in action only once? This is how we learn Kamehameha Wave and Supreme Kai's instantaneous movement teleport. But his copying prowess goes even further. He can physically absorb other people, transforming his mind and body. Yes, talk to me! Damn you, Maju Boo! That's the most disturbing thing I have ever seen. Each version of Boo has a different personality based on whom he's absorbed. Fat Boo is cheerful and childlike due to absorbing the carefree Grand Supreme Kai. But then there's his original and most dangerous form, Kid Boo. He's so tiny! He's like a little kid in MC Hammer Pants. This can't seriously be his deadliest form. Kid Boo is pure rage incarnate. How come he didn't turn back to pure evil Baju Boo, so the gray one? He's capable of tearing holes in the fabric of reality just by when screaming. When Vegeta pulled out Baju Boo, up with whatever planet he's on, that he'll one. just blow it to bits with his planet burst attack. In a universe chock full of planet busters, Baju Boo is one of the strongest. He has destroyed entire yes. galaxies by systematically obliterating each planet one by one over time. He's defeated most of Dragon Ball Z's most powerful characters, including Vegeta, Gotenks, and Gohan. He one-shot the King of the Demon Realm and easily bested the Supreme Kai's. Who are like the gods of other gods. So needless to say, Boo is pretty friggin' strong. But he's also extremely cocky, caring little about strategy or personal safety. And while his regenerative ability seems to make him indestructible, Boo is one of the only Dragon Ball characters whose body has been visibly affected by ordinary bullets. And while being able to destroy planets, his body is not tough enough to tank the explosion, forcing him to regenerate from a mess of pink particles. Despite having the mind of a child and a body of Play-Doh, Machin Boo might just be the deadliest villain in Dragon Ball history. Angry explosion. And no, the most dangerous villain in Dragon Ball Z history so far is probably Beerus. All right, the commands are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, if you like Dragon Ball, make well, sure you check this out. Well, you got a good, I guess. Both good and bad, I guess. We'll go ahead and watch this. It's because it's hilarious. Super Saiyan God Goku. Making fun of Toy Story. I don't want you anymore. What? Merry Christmas. Huh? <laughs> you can own one of these totally not possessed limited edition pop vinyl figures exclusively at Funimation.com. Click the link below and use the code DBZ Screw Attack for 10% off only at Funimation.com. <laughs> but right now, it's time for our death battle. Here comes. The death battle. Hello. Thank God, I have not returned it to candy. Both of them are so baby childish. Kirby should not even be able to hit Majin Buu, in my opinion. Especially in kid form. 
this room might be a little evil kid boo farm. not have done that. Anyway, if that happened in the show, that would not have happened. His whole body would have changed. Man, look at his eyes. Poor Boo. <laughs> really school attack? Too bad it doesn't do that in, in, in Susan Sprawlers. And I say this was ridiculous also. How come that technique of his destroyed planets but it doesn't destroy... Uh, I don't know if that was... <laughs> no, forget, 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 forget. Let him absorb and rebound anything that could have 
killed him. And Kirby's no slouch when it comes to power. He tanked a planet-sized explosion without a scratch when the same kind of blast turns Boo into mush. And remember the frying pan thing? Pop Star is approximately the same size as the planet Shiver Star, which is actually a post-apocalyptic Earth. This means Pop Star's gravity and escape velocity must be similar to that of Earth's. Throwing the giant acid monster Popon up to the sun means Kirby threw at least three and a half tons over 25,000 miles per hour. And that's not even counting the giant frying pan or the return trip. And Kirby's warp star moves faster than light, a speed Boo has never had to combat before. But Boomstick, Boo could have teleported away from the planet first ball, right? Well, his instantaneous no. movement has limits in extreme situations, such as when he didn't use it when a similar giant ball of murder was killing him at the end of Dragon Ball Z. Boo just couldn't stomach this fight. The winner is Kirby. Next time on Death Battle. Okay. Man. Yeah, they Kirby should not have been able to win that fight in my opinion. Majibu is a hundred no maybe a million times more powerful than Kirby. I don't see why the creators allowed Kirby to do all that stuff and all. Hmm. But yeah, Majibu should have won. Okay everyone. Thank you so much for watching this Death Battle with me. Like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye, everybody.